Good morning. I'd like to thank the organisers for inviting me to speak today on conformity, selectivity and gradient indices in Gamma Knife. First of all, I'd like to ask what is a conformal plan? Well, it's a dose plan where the radiation distribution is tailored to the shape of the radiosurgical target. But to what degree uh, in the old days, maybe 20 years ago with Gamma Knife, we talked about conformal treatment plans. What one centre said was conformal might just use two isocenters, while another centre might use 20 isocenters. But as conformal treatment is the reason why radiosurgery is at all possible, it would seem sensible to be able to measure it and quote the degree of conformity of treatment with any published results. So what we want is an index that should give us an objective score telling us how well the radiation distribution conforms to the size and shape of the treatment target. And by convention, a perfect score is one and a poor score is either high or low. Probably the first index to be introduced, it was called the PITV ratio. Um, published by Shaw et al. in the RTOG Radiosurgery Guidelines, also known as the RTOG Conformity Index. So it's simply the prescription isodose volume, which is the yellow line seen on this treatment plan, divided by the target volume, which is the red line uh, which uh, delineates the target. The advantages are that it's easy to calculate, so a value of greater than one suggests a too large treatment volume, while a value of less than one suggests a too small treatment volume. It was used in some of the RTOG 905 uh, results um, to demonstrate the differences. And here you can see if you cover your target with a single isocenter on the left, uh, your PTIV ratio is 2.7 while you get a much better index if you use additional isocenters. So here we've got a two isocenter plan uh, with a PITV ratio of 1.4. Now the disadvantages are that this score assumes that the centre of the treatment volume is located at the centre of the tumour. So a treatment plan would receive the same score wherever the prescription dose is. So these three treatment plans that you see below all have the same PITV ratio, even though the one on the right is almost a complete geographical miss. So the missing ingredient here is coverage, and that's the volume of the target covered by the prescription isodose. It's a, an essential parameter and needs to be included in any reliable index. And it's usually described in terms of percentage coverage. Now there are pros and cons with coverage. Uh, the advantage is that if the prescription isodose volume isn't centered on the target volume, you'll get a bad score, which is what you want. The disadvantage is that a perfect score is given even if too large a treatment volume is treated. So for example, uh, whole brain irradiation would be described as perfectly conformal if you said that your conformity index was just coverage. So there's another ingredient that we need, and that's the proportion of the prescription isodose volume inside the target volume. That's also known as the selectivity. If you like, it's the proportion of the prescription isodose volume that's doing good. For a perfect plan, this will be one. Uh, the disadvantage is that an undertreated plan gives a perfect uh, score of selectivity as well. So we've got two different indices at odds with each other. But if we combine both those ratios together, then uh, we get all of the advantages with none of the disadvantages. And that's what we have really with the treatment plan. Uh, we're trying to balance the proportion of target covered with the proportion uh, of spillage outside of the target. So for a perfect plan, the target volume is equal in magnitude to the prescription isodose volume, which is equal in magnitude to the target volume covered by the prescription isodose volume. 
and so the index is 1. And we can make the score a percentage of conformity if we like, so 100% would be a perfect plan and 0% would be a miss. How we calculate this, it's very easy to calculate using a gamma plan because we automatically get the coverage and the selectivity of the treatment plan and so we just multiply those two values together uh, so in this case uh, the uh, PCR paddock conformity index has a score of 0 0.90 and in this slide we can see uh, four different treatment plans and we can apply the PITV ratio of the, uh, to those and the paddock conformity index and what you'll notice is that Plan 3 here, because the prescription isodose volume is the same magnitude as the target volume, it gets a false perfect score with the PITV ratio, showing uh, the disadvantage of that. While the paddock conformity index takes that into account because it also measures the target coverage, and so you get a, a poor score. So a conformity index of, say, 0.8, it could mean that 20% of the target is outside of the prescription isodose volume or 20% of the prescription isodose volume is outside of the target or some combination of the two, which is far more likely because that's how treatment plans are constructed with a compromise between coverage and selectivity. Now, using the index, you can... Um, judge different treatment plans and this is a, a little study that I did looking at um, the increase in conformity index of the first plans that I uh, constructed so here we can see um, the first 50 plans that I constructed the next 50 the next 50 the next 50 and so on and you see um, a, a pretty much a linear learning curve uh, until you get to about 200 patients and then there's a trail off um, and then increased conformity um, came with uh, newer versions of the gamma knife. So in 2006, we got a Model 4C gamma knife. And then in 2007, we got a Perfection gamma knife. And then with improvements in the treatment planning system, we've seen uh, increasing uh, mean conformity indices uh, thereon. So you can see that the conformity index does actually correlate quite nicely with uh, planner experience. So while the proposed scoring system doesn't take into account the type of normal tissue irradiated, so it, it could uh, represent optic chiasm being over irradiated or, or um, CSF, it's nevertheless a valuable tool when an objective comparison between two treatment plans is required measuring the coverage and selectivity of the radiation dose. And furthermore, it doesn't create any false perfect scores. There are other indices uh, available. Uh, this is one called the CGI uh, index. And this looks at not only the conformity, but also the gradient outside of the target. Um, while it's a nice index to have it's extremely complex to calculate and I think one of the important things with an index is that it's uh, easily calculated. So let's look at dose gradients now. With improved treatment delivery technology yielding increasingly conformal treatment plans we have a decreasing amount of normal tissues that are being covered with the prescription isodose, in this case, this very uh, conformal cavernous sinus uh, meningioma here. So these lower doses, um, or the, the vast majority of dose deposited in normal tissues comes from outside of the prescription isodose. And it's these lower doses that have been shown to predict the incidence of symptomatic radiation necrosis. And the gradient index is a very simple way of quantifying the dose fall off outside of the prescription isodose, which should minimize complications. So the gradient index is simply uh, the ratio of the volume of half the prescription isodose divided by the prescription isodose, with the idea that if the 
Dose fall off is very steep. The volume of half the prescription isodose will be very small and so the gradient index will be small. A high gradient index suggests a poor dose fall off while a low index suggests a steep dose fall off. A gradient index of less than three is achievable with gamma knife plans for single targets and a gradient index of greater than three um, while it might have some merit in treatments of diffuse disease uh, suggests that shots have been placed uh, outside the boundary of the target and you can see this here in these two treatment plans the one on the left the isocenters have been placed inside the target so you've got a, a relatively low gradient index while if the isocenters are placed on the edge of the target, uh, you get a, a poorer index. And there have been a number of studies now supporting uh, the importance of gradient outside the target. Um, the studies have done that looking at lower dose volumes. So for instance, a Flickinger's 12 gray volume was found to be a predictor of uh, AVM complications and there have been numerous other studies showing that these lower isodose volumes um, can be uh, predictive of uh, symptomatic radiation necrosis. Now the dose gradient is a function of the beam penumbra, uh, so that's the collimation of the system, the beam energy and the secondary electron range, and also the primary beam and how you use it. And the golden rule is to ensure that the primary beam is always directed inside the target. Now that's easy if you can shape the beam, if you've got, let's say, micro multi-leaf collimators. But for the gamma knife and the cyber knife, we have to use multiple smaller beams to compensate for this at the expense of beam on time. Where is the primary beam on a gamma knife? It's very difficult to see. We've actually got 192 beams typically irradiating a single isocenter. But if you see here, we have a vestibular schwannoma uh, treatment plan. Uh, on the medial edge uh, to the right of this slide is the brain stem. And clearly, if we place an isocenter on the edge of the target like this, uh, this individual beam will be contributing as much dose to the brain stem as it will be to the tumour. And so we need to move that isocenter further into the target. And that's just what I showed you earlier on, uh, where we need to pack our shots uh, closer inside our target in order to get a steeper dose fall off. So if we've got our radiation source and we've got our target, this is one way of treating uh, where the edge of our beam just touches the edge of the target and that will ensure that we get the steepest dose fall off possible. Um, what's often done with some radio surgery technologies is that the beam is actually opened up a bit. Uh, that will give you increased homogeneity inside your target, but it will be at the expense of dose gradient. Uh, this uh, scatter plot shows you uh, the results of uh, the NHS benchmarking tests um, looking at the uh, different treatment parameters for different uh, radiosurgery platforms. And you can see, see here that the lowest gradient indices uh, come from uh, treatment plans from the gamma knife, um, then other ones here from the cyber knife, uh, and then here we've got other ones from stereotactic linux. But what you can see is a general trend that as you reduce your prescription dose so you ex accept a, a higher maximum dose within your target uh, your gradient index tends to go down so the lowest uh, gradient indices here uh, tend to be for the uh, lowest prescription isodoses it's important to know where we should use uh, conformity and gradient indices on the left, we have a small uh, micromet in a non-eloquent area. Now that's going to be safe however you treat it. And it really doesn't matter too much what your conformity or gradient index is. While on the right, we have a, a large uh, brainstem met. Um, and every effort should be made to optimize the conformity and gradient of that treatment plan. So to summarize, conformity indices, while useful, 
tend to look at only one aspect of a plan. The gradient outside the target volume may be a more important measure of potential toxicity given a reasonable conformity. Homogeneity and margins both increase the dose to normal tissue. And finally, no index is a substitute for clinical judgment. Thank you very much for your attention.